guys, today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a different video, and I apologize for any shaky footage. I am actually up on the aerial shelter, but today I want to show how I build a axe collar for this GBS. Okay. I've used fur, because uh, I have a black bear, and I've used that for uh, parts of collars on this axe and my wetterlings, but today I want to do an instructional video with some actual just regular so old, just actual regular old leather, uh, so that you guys can get a more clear view of how exactly I build axe collars. I'm also going to be kind of trying a new a version that's uh, more slim, or smaller, rather, smaller, uh, so it'll likely be right around here, that will be the cutoff point. And I'm just going to show you guys some of the tips and tricks that I've learned through building the different axe collars that I've built when cutting around things like ears um, and just overall how I go about doing that. Like anything, you of course want to find a piece of hide that you think would be suitable. This, like I said, is just normal hide, uh, cow hide. It's nothing incredibly special. You can get this pretty much everywhere that has uh, tanned hides. It also comes down to the fact of whether or not you want something that is um, has fur on it or not. Um, fur can be nice, as I've made mention uh, in previous videos. The fur is kind of like an insulation. Uh, it can be nice in many different ways, but it can also be like with my axe loop on my current pants I'm wearing right now and some of my other pants, it is actually the uh, fur is so much that it can't handle going through that axe loop. Um, so definitely take into mind what you want to do and what kind of situation you want your uh, axe collars to be valid the bush for. crafting video. I'm going to be crafting this in the bush, of course. And so I'm going to be using it all for most of this, uh, all in scissors that are all going to be included on my uh, Leatherman Surge. This is one of the reasons why I do like the Leatherman Surge. Uh, is it has a lot of very useful tools on it. So what I like to do is first figure out my overall size, like how how long I want this to be, and then I will generally, like I said, I'll estimate that on the handle, and then I punch a hole, and then I will cut to that hole that I punched. Or if sometimes I actually want to keep that, if I want that to be the first hole, I will actually cut a little bit underneath it. Here's the piece now trimmed, as you guys can see, there is the original hole that I punched. I hope you guys can see that. That is the original hole that I punched, and you guys can see this is about how long it's going to be. So another tip, as I have made quite a few uh, collars, one thing I like to do, and this is something very similarly done by, I feel like, MCQ, is that generally you'll want to have these holes actually right here on the piece of wood. So that the piece of cordage, whether it's leather, whether it's uh, paracord, whatever, will actually run across the back of the wood. And there should actually be exposed wood in the back. Like You should be able to see the back of this piece of wood entirely. Uh, so generally you'll want your hole to be right around this area here. Is, uh, going around the ears. Uh, what I like to do is personally take the awl once again, and since the awl has such a sharp tip on it, what I like to do is, as I get it out here, essentially just take it around where the ear is and actually score the leather. Um, some people uh, use a more complex way. Uh, another thing you should do is, especially with leather, since it's so stretchy, uh, you want to try and get as much stretch out as you can in the beginning. Um, and so you'll want to actually kind of stretch this leather. Hopefully you guys can see that. And I'm holding it with the back of my thumb. As you guys can see there. And I'm just going to take this, put it up against the metal, and essentially just score this leather right up against the metal. And this works a lot like a pencil, but almost more like a dull knife. Um, and I don't want to necessarily use a knife for this because I could damage, one, the knife edge if it cut through the leather into the steel. I could actually damage the uh, edge of the knife, of course, but I could also damage the wood handle if the edge went through this leather and went into the wood. On video, we'll not really be able to see that scored mark, but do trust me, it is actually there. So there you guys go. That is very close. It does need just a little bit more trimming right here. Um, 
but overall it is oh, pretty much completed close. with this uh, i apologize for the aircraft in the background but uh overall that's what it looks like do keep in mind when uh, laying these two together especially on a handmade axe like a gba these ears will be asymmetrical so you cannot just lay this over and cut the ears as if you know they were both symmetrically made um, unfortunately gbas are uh, asymmetrical so it would now work. on to the next piece is uh, to punch holes essentially however many you think are necessary to properly give the axe a texture so there it is uh, I have punched all the holes with the awl quick note when punching these holes they should be pretty symmetrical as far as it goes uh, so one quick thing you can do when punching these holes especially if you don't have the best eyesight or whatever reason uh, is on the back of it preferably so that no one can see it uh, is run lines from your originally punched hole over to the other side where you're going to be punching the hole sorry if that doesn't really come out well but that's what I kind of did there Hopefully you guys can see that line uh, but you can just run a little line using the awl. Um, you can just essentially run a little line from one hole to the other. And that can really help you uh, with making sure that these two holes or, you know, all these different holes are quite parallel. Um, so you take too many. I just put four on each side because, once again, this is about uh, three inches, maybe three and a half inches uh, uh, long. So this is not a particularly large guard uh, and depending on the beard of the axe you do not need a particularly long guard on your axe or long collar um, a lot like a just general purpose more of a woods axe generally you'll want a shorter collar because they don't have much of a beard especially with something like this GBA uh, you can see it does not have much of a beard so this really does protect uh, on any overstrikes, so on something like a GBA or uh, Husqvarna, Wetterlings, those kinds of things, you do not generally need one, though it can be kind of nice not to really have found one. for securement. I have not really found a great way of securing these axes, unfortunately. Um, but the way I currently use is to use, of course, paracord and run it through like you'd be lacing up a boot, and then. Um, putting a diamond knot and you guys can go YouTube a diamond knot uh, but I like to put a diamond knot at the end and the reason why is diamond knots are very secure very shock resistant of course because you're going to be using an axe it'll have a lot of shock to it uh, those knots are extremely shock resistant but they are still easily adjustable especially if you leave a tail on them you can easily adjust them through and make enough space where these can be removed I know people like um, MCQ Bushcraft have done different ways especially with leather lace and leather lace is really good if you want to make a permanent uh, axe collar but for me like I said it's not always convenient to have an axe collar and I'm, I don't generally miss that much anyways so really I use it to help my hand hold something that's not ice cold because even this wood like right now this wood is pretty cold whereas this right now being in the same temperature for the same amount of time is still very neutral so I like it for that fact that it's a nice warmer handle uh, to hold when I need to um, but anyways if you want a more permanent thing you can wet form these and you can do all the different steps that I just did while the leather is actually wet and you can stretch it over the wood and actually wet form it and same with the leather lace you uh, wet the leather lace as well and you really torque that thing down and then you can make a nice little knot at the end and so if you want a more permanent method, you can do something like that. Um, if you guys have enjoyed that, like I said, I'm sorry about having no cord. Um, <laughs> I used actually a lot of the cord uh, that I had on this actual shelter because this shelter was quite cord intensive. But I will likely roll in some pictures. Don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and tell me what you guys' thoughts are on uh, collars and have you guys ever made one. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are and your experiences are. Anyways, guys, I'm out.